Hey guys! Okay, today's demo is slip decorating. Slip is liquid colored clay and I am painting it onto leather hard clay. So this is decoration before bisque. And then you bisque fire it and then you put clear glaze on it and then you glaze fire it, usually in oxidation to get good color. And why slip is awesome is because you can, it stays where you put it. It doesn't melt together like glaze does. And so you can get really fine detail. You can overlap colors. You can carve through colors. And I'm going to show you some of those techniques. So the very first technique, the most simple, is just painting. And what I'm doing right now is I would call like laying down a bed of color, the background. And I often do this on my own work. Because you can make stripes or delineate different areas of the pots in different colors. If you wanted your pot to be all one color, you'd just dip it in glaze. But here, I'm going to make certain areas different colors. And for this shape, I often make the rim one color and the other parts another color. Sometimes, I don't know if you can see that, but I paint this edge down there, makes it all matchy-matchy, gives you some closure, some finish. The color that I'm using, all slips look different before they're fired and after they're fired. So this is the same color, okay? And I'm gonna show you, I don't know, four or five different ways of using slip. And so the next one, combining with painting, is um, using a paper resist. And so I drew this little bird, it's supposed to be a cardinal. And I got the paper wet. And I stuck it on there. And so that's newsprint. And because it's so thin and the paper's wet, it acts kind of just like a sticker. And so use your finger to squeegee out any air bubbles. Make sure it's stuck on there. And so this is technique works amazing. Remember those snowflakes we used to cut out when we were little kids? Those were great paper dolls, anything. There's actually a whole art of paper cutting, which is really, really awesome if you want to look that up. Okay, so make your little sticker there out of newsprint, stick it on, squeeze out all of the excess water and all of the air bubbles. Good. And then continue painting. So, and it, like I said, I don't really want this bowl to be like just all red. So I'm actually going to show you another way of using the slip and start to use it more like a watercolor. So I'm thinning it down, dipping it in the water and in the slip bucket as I go down to the middle. So I'm gonna make like a fade. It's gonna be bright up on the top rim. And then as I go down, it will fade lighter and lighter. Just for some interest and variety, just because I can. <laughs> now, you do have to get used to working with it because it doesn't look the same now as it's gonna look after it's fired. So you just have to have faith. And as you make it thinner, it's gonna look more painterly. You're gonna see the, the brush strokes. If you want a good solid color, like you saw me do on the rim, you're gonna go around two or three times um, go over it two or three times wet. Like you don't have to let it dry in between. It dries pretty quick. Well, it depends on how wet your clay is. So this is a good leather heart. I just trimmed this bowl yesterday and wrapped it up tight and knew that I'd come back to it today. It's all set. So you finish your piece exactly how you'd want it. Like you add your handles, whatever you have to do, and then you do your slip decorating.
if you can see the color of the clay through, you're gonna see it afterwards. So actually it can look really nice to leave the brush strokes in there. That's good. I think that'll work. Okay, and then we're actually gonna set this aside and let it dry for a few minutes while we work on another example because you can see it's still shiny, right? You want that tackiness to go away Hi. before you do your next steps. So here's another one. This guy's a blue jay. So this is blue. This is this color. Even though it looks gray now, after it's been fired, it's going to be blue. So I'm recentering the piece. And so this I painted on, I don't know, 10 minutes ago. And it's dried a little bit. And so the next one I wanted to show you, so we had painted. Next we're gonna do is graffito. So here's my favorite little carving tool. That's an MRS5 mini ribbon sculpting tool. Um, I like this one because you hold it like a triangle or you hold it like a pencil. The triangle's the best shape, okay? And so what I wanted to show with graffito is that you see my painting here. I painted in some detail, but it's kind of messy and blobby. That's fine because I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna scraffito it. So, let's just go around it and tighten up those lines a little bit. And so even though my painting was not all that great before, this tool is so much easier to use because it's almost just like a pencil. You hold it like a pencil, you draw with it like it's a pencil. And it's just really easy to use. I hope the light's alright for you to see this, but I wanted to show you that you can add texture. And so this part of the bird is kind of a grayish white. This clay will fire up to an off-white color, reads as white. And so I'm adding a little texture there. And so I love working with slip because it's... The decoration becomes part of the form. It's not just laid on top. So look at this guy, he's got little I've never drawn this guy before, but my new house has hundreds of them. And so I'm inspired by them. <laughs> I look them up and it says that they're a sign of fearlessness and clarity and speaking your truth, which is funny because they're, if you know their behavior at all, they're loud. <laughs> so this is black that I'm using now. And look, you can just paint right over other colors. And so the blue and the black won't blend together. It'll just be black. You can do like yellow over black as long as you make it thick enough. And as long as the first color is dry. That's cool. There's little feet on there. And, you know, people always say, Oh, I can't draw. How can I do that? Um, everyone can draw. Just not everyone can draw well. And how you get better at stuff is by practicing. I took an observational drawing class once, and that's neat. It helps. You just look at it and break it down into the basic shapes. 
And so the other thing is, is if you look at lots of artists out there, it's not like they're, like everybody has their own style. It doesn't have to look like totally realistic. It just, it's handmade. It's not a photograph. And uh, people will get it. Like it looks good when you're done. Should I keep? saying in class, you know, just keep, just keep going, keep trying. I don't know if that's exactly what the bird looks like, but it's fine. That's close enough. <laughs> all right, okay, you probably don't need to watch me draw all of the stripes. <laughs> and then I want to show you another, just to thing that you can do in this little area right here is another technique called inlay or mishima where before we started I did some stamping and I stamped in you can carve or stamp so here oh it has to be really dry I carved in no I stamped in sorry actually the Latin name of the Blue Jay. And then I filled the indent, a slip. Look, it's working, it looks so good. The longer you wait, the better it looks because it dries more and it gets crisp. So this is called inlay, slip or inlay or mishima. It always sounds better in a different language. Mishima is Japanese, and actually the way I was taught was that inlay is when you carve or draw it, and Mishima is when it's a texture. But their terms are interchangeable. Come on. I just want to finish because I want you to see it. it's going to look good. That looks good. And then don't make the mistake of trying to clean it up with a sponge. <laughs> because it'll smear. Right? Cyanocita cristada. Ah, oh, sounds so good. All right, so that's done. I'll do a little bit more carving there, but that oh, looks like it, right? Let's see, I remember I was like, you know, if the painting doesn't look that good, carve it out a little bit. Looks like it. Right? It doesn't have to be all perfect. It's good enough. Okay, stop messing with it. <sighs> Alright, so we've got painting, scraffito. That's what it is when you carve into it. We've got paper resist. And then I'm just going to come back to this one and show you the reveal. Let's dry it a little bit. So cool. It's just so wet. And then one more that I wanted to show you. The last one is uh, what we call slip trailing. So I've got this little tiny bottle. It's like a glue bottle with a nozzle, like a mechanical pencil. And I'm going to test it out somewhere else first, like on the table. And then I'm going to write something with it. You can draw your design on first in uh, pencil. I have to do it upside down so you can see it. Jeez. Oh, here's a tip for you too. So this is going to say love. Okay, sometimes when you start out, the first letter doesn't always go that well. Or the first stroke, you don't have to do letters with it. I, I like letters. So I'm writing love here, but I'm actually gonna do the O first because it'll be less noticeable if I mess up on the first, 
on the O than it will be if I do it on the L. Because it takes a little bit of, I don't know what to call it, finesse, fine touch. Painstaking. <laughs> okay, so this is liquid colored clay, right? So what's again so cool about this is that when it fires, that texture, you can see that trailing gives you a bead, right? You can see that it's raised. That's gonna stay when it fires. And so you can feel the three-dimensional quality of it. Just like you can with the carving. When I was doing scraffito before, you can, you can feel that it's indented. Well, here you can feel that it's raised. A little shaky today, but that's the idea. I should probably finish the word just for the sake of can it look good for the video? God, when you're in the studio alone, you don't notice how long stuff takes. You're in flow, right? But when you're making a video, it seems like it takes forever. Ta da Done. Thanks for watching! <sighs>